The Lord's Prayer The Key Thy kingdom come to earth, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6 verse 10 The Daily in Heaven Before Rebellion The Hour Daily For joyful, happy songs of praise to God and His dear Son and the Holy Spirit Mother had come. Satan had led the heavenly choir. He had raised the first note. Then all the angelic host had united with him, and glorious strains of music had resounded through heaven in honor of God and his dear Son and the Holy Spirit Mother. The Daily in Heaven After Rebellion The hour of worship, the daily, draws nigh when bright and holy angels bow before the Father, Mother, and Son. No more will he, Satan, unite in heavenly song. No more will he bow in reverence and holy awe before the presence of the eternal God, the Trinity. The Daily in the Garden of Eden Adam had themes for contemplation in the works of God in Eden, which was heaven in miniature. It was under the trees of Eden that the first dwellers on earth had chosen their sanctuary. There Christ had communed with the Father of mankind. He, Adam, was in daily communion with heavenly beings. The happy pair, Adam and Eve, greeted with joy the visits of their Creator, as in the cool of the day he walked and talked with them. Daily, morning and evening, God taught them his lessons. Read Genesis 3.8 the daily. After Adam and Eve sinned, at the cherubim-guarded gate of paradise the divine glory was revealed. Hither came Adam and his sons to worship God. Here they renewed their vows of obedience to that law, the transgression of which had banished them from Eden. Here, at the gate of Eden, their altars were reared, and their offerings presented, morning and evening. It was here that Cain and Abel had brought their sacrifices, and God had condescended to communicate with them. Read Genesis chapter 4. The sacrificial offerings, morning and evening, were ordained by God to be to man a perpetual reminder and a penitential acknowledgement of his sin and a confession of his faith in the promised Redeemer. They were intended to impress upon the fallen race the solemn truth that it was sin that caused death. To Adam, the offering of the first sacrifice was a most painful ceremony. His hand must be raised to take life, which only God could give. It was the first time he had ever witnessed death, and he knew that had he been obedient to God, there would have been no death of man or beast. As he slew the innocent victim, he trembled at the thought that his sin must shed the blood of the spotless Lamb of God. With intense interest, he, Satan, watched the sacrifices offered by Adam and his sons. In these ceremonies, the daily, he discerned a symbol of communion between earth and heaven. In the child of Bethlehem was veiled the glory before which angels bow. This unconscious babe was the promised seed to whom the first altar at the gate of Eden pointed. Christ was nailed to the cross between the third and sixth hour, that is between nine and twelve o'clock. In the afternoon he died. This was the hour of the evening sacrifice. Then the veil of the temple, that which hid God's glory from the view of the congregation of Israel, was rent in twain from top to bottom. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land, until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my Father, my God, my Mother, why hast thou forsaken me? Mark fifteen twenty-five thirty-three thirty-four. 34 In the Antitype, Christ fulfilled the sanctuary law of both the morning and the evening sacrifice, the daily. He was nailed to the cross at the third hour, nine o'clock. He died at the ninth hour, three o'clock. Mugs, the daily, and Abraham. 
God selected Abraham as his messenger through whom to communicate light to the world. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Hebrew 11.8 He builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. Genesis 12.8 Then the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. His faith was strengthened by this assurance that the divine presence was with him, that he was not left to the mercy of the wicked. Of And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. Still a wayfarer, he soon removed to a spot near Bethel, and again erected an altar, and called upon the name of the Lord. The life of Abraham, the friend of God, was a life of prayer. Wherever he pitched his tent, close beside it was built an altar, upon which were offered the morning and evening the daily sacrifice. Shuiao, many a roving Canaanite, whose knowledge of God had been gained from the life of Abraham his servant, tarried at that altar to offer sacrifice to Jehovah, the daily, and Isaac and Jacob. Isaac had been trained from childhood to ready, trusting obedience, and as the purpose of God was opened before him, he yielded a willing submission. He was a sharer in Abraham's faith. Crossing the Jordan, Jacob came in peace to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. Genesis 33:18 RV Thus the patriarch's prayer at Bethel, that God would bring him again in peace to his own land, had been granted. For a time he dwelt in the vale of Shechem. It was here that Abraham, more than a hundred years before, had made his first encampment and erected his first altar in the land of promise. Here Jacob bought the parcel of ground where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money, and he erected there an altar and called it El Elohe Israel, verses 19 to 20. God the God of Israel. Like Abraham, Jacob set up beside his tent an altar unto the Lord, calling the members of his household to the morning and the evening sacrifice, the daily and the sanctuary under Moses. In order that the earthly tabernacle might represent the heavenly, it must be perfect in all its parts, and it must be in every smallest detail like the pattern in the heavens. The ministration of the earthly sanctuary consisted of two divisions. The priest ministered daily in the holy place, while once a year the high priest performed a special work of atonement in the most holy. Day by day the repentant sinner brought his offering to the door of the tabernacle and placing his hand upon the victim's head, confessed his sins thus in figure transferring them from himself to the innocent sacrifice. Every morning and evening a lamb of a year old was burned upon the altar with its appropriate meat offering, thus symbolizing the daily consecration of the nation to Jehovah and their constant dependence upon the atoning blood of Christ. Only an offering, without blemish, could be a symbol of his perfect purity, who was to offer himself as a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter 1.19 In the offering of incense, the priest was brought more directly into the presence of God than in any other act of the daily ministration. As the cloud of incense arose, the divine glory descended upon the mercy seat and filled the most holy place, and often so filled both apartments that the priest was obliged to retire to the door of the tabernacle. As the priests, morning and evening, entered the holy place at the time of incense, the daily sacrifice was ready to be offered upon the altar in the court. This was a time of intense interest to the worshippers who assembled at the tabernacle. 
Before entering into the presence of God through the ministration of the priest, they were to engage in earnest searching of heart and confession of sin. They united in silent prayer, with their faces toward the holy place. Thus, their petitions ascended with the cloud of incense, while faith laid hold upon the merits of the promised Savior prefigured by the atoning sacrifice, by blood and by incense, symbols of two intercessors, Messiah and the Shekinah, God was to be approached, symbols pointing to the great mediator through whom sinners may approach Jehovah and through whom alone mercy and salvation can be granted to the repentant, believing soul. The Daily and Elijah, Daniel, and Ezra Elijah, at the hour of evening sacrifice, repairs the altar of God, which the apostasy of Israel has allowed the priests of Baal to tear down. He does not call upon one of the people to aid him in his laborious work. The altars of Baal are all prepared. But he turns to the broken-down altar of God, which is more sacred and precious to him in its unsightly ruins than all the magnificent altars of Baal. With calmness and solemnity, he repairs the broken-down altar with twelve stones, according to the number of the twelve tribes of Israel. He then reverentially bows before the unseen God, raises his hands toward heaven, and offers a calm and simple prayer. 1 Kings 18.31-32 No sooner is the prayer of Elijah ended than flames of fire, like brilliant flashes of lightning, descend from heaven upon the upreared altar, consuming the sacrifice. 1 Kings 18.37-32 38. When in later times the Jews were scattered as captives in distant lands, they still, at the appointed hour, turned their faces toward Jerusalem and offered up their petitions to the God of Israel. In this custom, Christians have an example for morning and evening prayer. With calmness, he, Daniel, performed his duties as chief of the princes, and at the hour of prayer he went to his chamber, and with his windows open toward Jerusalem, in accordance with his usual custom, he offered his petition to the God of heaven. Daniel 6.18 At the time of the evening sacrifice, Ezra rose, and once more rending his garment and his mantle, he fell upon his knees and unburdened his soul in supplication to heaven. This was the beginning of a wonderful reformation. More than 2,000 years have passed since Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. Yet the lapse of time has not lessened the influence of his pious example. Ezra 9.5 The Daily and the Messiah The daily service consisted of the morning and evening burnt offering, the offering of sweet incense on the golden altar, and the special offerings for individual sins. And there were also offerings for Sabbaths, new moons, and special feasts. Every morning and evening a lamb of a year old was burned upon the altar, with its appropriate meat offering, thus symbolizing the daily consecration of the nation to Jehovah. Exodus 29.39.46 Christ was standing at the point of transition between two economies and their two great festivals. He, the spotless Lamb of God, was about to present himself as a sin offering, that he would thus bring to an end the system of types and ceremonies, the animal sacrifices, that for four thousand years had pointed to his death. In the antitype, Christ fulfilled the sanctuary law of both the morning and the evening sacrifice. He was nailed to the cross at the third hour, nine o'clock, Numbers 28, 4. And when they had crucified him, it was the third hour, Mark 15, 24, 25. He died at the ninth hour, three o'clock. When the loud cry, It is finished, came from the lips of Christ, the priests were officiating in the temple. It was the hour of the evening sacrifice, as the high priest was ready to slay the lamb, 
the daily typical evening service at the ninth hour, 3 p.m., which pointed to Jesus, the anti-typical lamb, the veil of the temple between the holy and the most holy place, where the high priest was forbidden to enter except once a year on the occasion of the Day of Atonement, was rent by the hand of omnipotence, and the typical sacrifice escaped. Mark 15, 33, 38. Here was shown the transferal of the daily from earth to heaven, Passover, A.D. 31. What was done in type in the ministration of the earthly sanctuary, bringing the fresh warm blood of the Lamb into the holy place and offering it before the veil, is done in reality. In A.D. 31, on Friday at 3 p.m., in the ministration of the heavenly sanctuary, Hebrew, 914. Why did Jesus cry out twice to God, and why did he ask why they had forsaken him? In the first place, there are two members of the Godhead besides Jesus, and he called to them both, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. When they left him, Jesus knew that he was dying. Why did the Father and the Holy Spirit both leave Jesus? Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit from the day John baptized him. Mark 1, 9, 1, 10. He, the Son of God's, had given his life to redeem man, and it was necessary to fulfill the sanctuary law, for his blood to be mediated in the heavenly sanctuary at the time of the evening sacrifice, when the blood of the sacrifice must be offered as the seventh-day Sabbath drew on. Therefore, it was mandatory the Messiah's Father sit on his throne as the Holy Spirit, acting in the capacity of high priest Melchizedek, mediated the blood of the Son, the sacrifice, in the heavenly sanctuary. Consequently, we see not only the Son involved in the sacrifice of his life to redeem man, but also all heaven and the triune Godhead, the whole heavenly family were involved. The transfer of the temple service from the earthly sanctuary, offering of the blood of animals, which was a pattern of the heavenly, was accomplished by offering the blood of the Son of Gods in the heavenly sanctuary by the Eternal Spirit, Melchizedek, Hebrew 9.14, the daily and the wave sheaf offering. Christ's crucifixion on the cross, the rending of the veil on Friday, and his resting in the grave on the seventh-day Sabbath signified the ending of the typical earthly temple ceremonies. At that time, the Mosaic dispensation with the presence of the Holy Shekinah, the offering of animal sacrifices, and the Levitical priesthood officially ended. The Messiah's resurrection on the first day of the week, the offering of the wave sheaf at Passover time in the heavenly courts, on the morrow after the Sabbath, Leviticus. 23.11 Before the Eternal Father signalized the beginning of the heavenly sanctuary. Daily, morning and evening, temple service in the holy place. John 20.17 The Daily and the Early Believers While our high priest was offering daily, morning and evening in heaven, the apostles were offering daily, morning and evening, in the temple on earth, Acts 3.1, the emblems of his broken body and spilt blood, the bread and the wine, Acts 2.46, from house to house, 9 and 3 o'clock, the daily taken away. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first from the truth, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And Thessalonian. 2, 3. And he, the man of sin, shall speak words against the Most High, and think to change times and laws, times, the daily, seventh-day Sabbath, new moons, Passover, feast of unleavened bread, Pentecost, day of atonement, feast of tabernacles, laws, moral and ceremonial. Daniel 7.25. Yea, he, the man of sin, magnified himself even to the prince of the host, Christ, and by him 
the man of sin, the daily sacrifice, Christ, was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Daniel 8.11 Christ was taken away, or replaced by the man of sin, who magnified himself to be God, as he cast down the place of his, Christ's, sanctuary, his dwelling place, and the sanctuary, truths destroyed, 70 A.D., 538 A.D. The new law of the man of sin has its own spirit and its own sacrifice and its own feasts, holy days, which have taken the place of those appointed in the law of Moses. We say, this church has the right to change the ceremonial laws of the Old Testament, Daniel 7.25, change times, the daily, replaced by the abomination, yea, he, the man of sin, magnified himself even to the prince of the host, Christ, and by him, the man of sin, the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Daniel 8.11 The man of sin took away the daily sacrifice, the partaking of the emblems of his blood sacrifice at nine and three o'clock, by which the believers followed Christ in faith as he presented his blood sacrifice to God at the same time in the heavenly sanctuary. The man of sin cast down Christ's sanctuary by taking away the knowledge of his daily ministration in the heavenly sanctuary at nine and three and setting up a counterfeit on earth. They shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Daniel 11.31 The sanctuary and the daily were replaced by the abomination. Daniel 11.31 The abomination must be some pagan religious institution, and that pagan doctrine was to make desolate. The man of sin took away God's appointed daily hours of prayer at nine and three. He thereby made desolate, deprived the believers of the knowledge of Christ's heavenly ministry at nine and three, and also the benefits of his mediation. The daily, when and by whom restored. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice, trodden under foot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Daniel eight thirteen fourteen. Notice the marginal rendering of the text in Daniel eight fourteen, unto two thousand and three hundred days. Margin, evening and morning, twenty three hundred morning sacrifices and twenty three hundred evening sacrifices, or twenty three hundred days, dailies, in prophetic time, twenty three hundred years, according to Ezekiel four. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Ezekiel 4 6. The seventh day Sabbath is a daily in that it consists of a morning and evening sacrifice. Numbers 28.9.10. According to Leviticus 23.2, it is the first feast mentioned. The same is true of each of the special Sabbaths enumerated in the chapter, each of which has its special offering besides the continual morning and evening sacrifice, the daily, that is, the truth began to be restored about them. In the time of the end, every divine institution is to be restored. It is to continue until all things are restored by antitypical Elijah. Matthew 17.11 Elias Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. Matthew 17.11 Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which one commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments, the daily and the sat baths of the Lord. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi 4.4.5 Prophecy must be fulfilled. Somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. This is the seventh round, and those who desire to stand on Mount Zion 
with the Lamb, live forever, never to see death, will be found observing his ordinances, laws, and statutes, including the morning and evening sacred hours of worship at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. as restored by the Elijah of today. The Daily and God's People Today, when the method pursued by Abraham is followed, then and then only, can any one of us be justified? There is no other way. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 3.29 If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. John 8.39 Let us take notice of Abraham's faith, experience, and justification. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye were hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father. Isaiah 51 verses 1-2 By simply doing the things that God asked of him, he obtained this record, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis 26, 5, 4. Having childlike faith in the word and doing all God has said is the only sanctification and righteousness that is Christ's. Such are the children of Abraham, and to them is the promise. They openly declare that the blood of Christ has the power to save them from the bondage of sin and from the condemnation of the law. The shall inherit the land forever and ever. These are the Israel of God. There are no others, and this only is, righteousness and sanctification by faith. There are many who fail to understand the relation of faith and works. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. John 8.39 and concerning the father of the faithful, the Lord declares, Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Genesis 26, 5. Says the apostle James, Faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. James 2, 17. And John, who dwells so fully upon love, tells us, This is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. 1 John 5, 3. From every home a holy light should shine forth. Love should be revealed in action. There are homes where this principle is carried out. Homes where God is worshipped and truest love reigns. From these homes, morning and evening prayer ascends to God as sweet incense, and his mercies and blessings descend upon the suppliants like the morning dew. So the homes should be lights in the world. From them, morning and evening, Prayer should ascend to God as sweet incense. As the morning dew, his mercies and blessings will descend upon the suppliants. Fathers and mothers, each morning and evening, gather your children around you, and in humble supplication, lift the heart to God for help. In every family there should be a fixed time for morning and evening worship. The Hour of Prayer 9 and 3 should not be neglected for any consideration. Do not talk and amuse yourselves till all are too weary to enjoy the sense of devotion. To do this is to present to God a lame offering at an early hour in the evening, 3 o'clock. When we can pray unhurriedly and understandingly, we should present our supplications and raise our voices in happy, grateful praise. The hours appointed for the morning and evening sacrifice were regarded as sacred, and they came to be observed as the set time for worship throughout the Jewish nation. In this custom, Christians have an example of morning and evening prayer. Bowing. Morning and evening, to seek pardon for sins committed and to present their requests for needed blessings. Morning and evening, nine and three, your earnest prayers should ascend to God for his blessing and guidance. The most important part of the daily ministration was the service performed in behalf of individuals. Such was the work 
that went on day by day throughout the year. So it is now. We have need of a daily, yes, hourly, morning, nine o'clock and evening, three o'clock. Mediation for sin and uncleanness, much the more as the day approaches when wickedness and uncleanness are on every side, do we, as believers, need the bread of the presence, ever near, before the face of the Lord for us. The messenger, Elijah, is today teaching the daily ministration of his blood in the sanctuary above and is calling all Israel to the daily worship hours, nine and three, that each may be prepared to stand in the great and dreadful day in which Elijah commands all to remember ye the law of Moses. You're obeying all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments of the moral law of Moses, you see, is your evidence that you have been born again, that you have been endowed with power from above, that you are enabled to choose the good and to refuse the evil, that you are the children of God. Keeping the commandments and the statutes in the Lord then is the light and shield of your life. It is the outward sign that by the life of Christ you have overcome. Revelation 2, 17, 3, 12 the enemy of your soul and body. This system of worship, therefore, is truly the righteousness by faith that brings the righteousness of Christ in the people of God. Yes, be convinced of the truth which I have tried to present to you, for it is your life, your prosperity, your health and happiness, your eternity 